what we do want to control are things like your tackle technique under fatigue. Uh, are you going head first or are you driving with your foot and shoulder first? Um, your, what's your anxiety around contact? Uh, so making sure if your child is anxious around contact work, um, they're probably going to be fearful, they're going to be tense, and it's going to transfer onto the game, and there's a bit of a feel out there with concussion experts that that puts them at risk. Um, so we want them to have confidence in their technique and understanding what success feels like with tackle technique, both fresh but also under fatigue. A couple of papers as well that are interesting for, for those athletes dealing with concussion and their return to play. There's a... Um, there's some notable, um, it takes a long time, not just the 21-day protocol for, a, sorry, the 12-day protocol for an athlete with their decision-making and skill acquisition. So perf from a performance point of view, we want to be exposing them to as much decision-making as possible. It's not going to bring on strong symptoms. Um, but, yeah, challenging that decision-making, they can do that simply by tracking a player if they're not involved in training. Um, and then also you can use a virtual reality-based um, uh, systems now technology to be able to challenge that decision making and doing reactive work uh, to just get that decision making process happening and then ultimately it's it's a skill so if you don't use it you lose it so understand trying to bridge that gap of when an athlete's not training with the with the squad and they're just focusing on those cardiovascular um, progressions more from an objective point of view and joel's um, so there seems to be a higher risk if your flexion to extension ratio so flexion being when we're um, pressing forwards um, to, to the way that you're facing compared to extension being pressing back behind you. Um, we want to have a ratio of, of above 0.6, the research is showing at the moment. Um, it is important to understand there's a lot, not a lot of research on AFL athletes in this space, so it's pretty new, um, but at the moment there's not a real understanding on lateral flexion and comparing side to side, um, but there is a bit of a feeling out there that your flexion to extension ratio we need to be above 0.6 um, to um, give ourselves confidence that the um, the neck is strong to be able to handle the forces of a 360 degree uh, uh, nature of the game of football like i said the importance of for coach out there to expose their athletes to chaos making sure that they're, they're sharp with their reactions uh, and they're being able to be exposed to match intensity during the week so they're more than ready to perform on game day um, but also from a physical point of view they've had that body contacts as well those collisions in training so they've built they've kept that hardness up um, as we all know that if you play contact sports and you don't have contact for a long period of time and then you get into it um, you're more likely for your head to move around or not feel as strong in those collisions and bumps